everyone, I'm Zuju Haj of Angola Access here amidst the Hayden Hughes, Parliamentary Secretary for Tourism in Angola. Hi Mr. Hughes, welcome Thank you to Angola Access. Thank you very much, it's a pleasure. So Mr. Hughes, you know you're a big fan of local music. What, were, what are your thoughts about last year and what do you I, I really thought that last, year, last year's carnival was one of the best carnivals ever. Um, I particularly enjoyed band fashion and of course um, the juvie. I really enjoyed that. Um, even though I did not attend the parade of troops, I understand it was one of our largest in recent memory. Um, I really enjoyed the fact that um, we were able not only to have our local bands show all of the talents and to be on display, but actually how we used um, last year a local security form which did a tremendous job and also the cooperation of the citizens of Angola so we really had a non-violent kind of crime free carnival last year. I really expect the same this year. I expect this carnival to supersede last year's carnival. I expect all of the bands to do a tremendous job as they have always done and I expect to have a, a spirit of, um, of mutual respect and competitiveness between the bands and the other talent. So rumors had it that you were a part of the whole panic vibes for your truck, for your work, the whole intro, everything. So well, I was actually, I, I went to the band clash last year, one of them. Um, that was the second band clash I've ever been to. The first one was um, the year when we did um, um, Panda Vibe 1, the Triple Crown, basically. Um, it is no secret that I'm a fan of all the bands in Angola, but in particular Panda Vibe because um, Panda is almost like a brother, a brother to me. And, um, but I was pleasantly surprised with the caliber of bands that band clashed last year. Um, I've written for uh, different bands in Angola, and I've also um, put pen to paper and assisted Panda Vibe. Um, last year I didn't do that with him. and I, I was not aware of what was going to transpire on Band Clash. Um, like everyone else, I was surprised uh, to see the fireworks. And relative to the fire truck, um, I, I, I'm not sure if people in Angola are aware, but whenever there's fireworks in a public venue like that, um, the fire truck must be uh, stationed. It is something that has to be done by our regulations, and there is no way that they could have fireworks without a fire truck. They go hand in hand. Um, I had no uh, sway whatsoever related to the truck. I did not know about it. I was um, wondering actually when I got there what the fire truck was doing there. And um, I asked someone to see what you see. So when it all went down, I was, uh, I was pleased. And not only I was pleased, but uh, last year we had um, some foreign entities covering the carnival. And they were impressed with our carnival. So whether you're a Panda Vibes fan or a Better Band fan or movements fan or uh, uh, any of the other bands fan. The fact of the matter is that Anguilla produced a very good product class, not only in Pantherway, but in all of the other presentations that the entire Caribbean was able to see and enjoy. Um, my portfolio um, is tourism. Um, I'm the parliamentary secretary responsible for tourism. With that comes great responsibility. And, um, and so, um, obviously, I will have a say relative to tourism in Angola. I don't have the ultimate say because the people at the end of the day have a say and I work in conjunction with tourism partners in Angola relative to the tourism product, product offerings and how we move forward relative to tourism. Okay. Now, Carnival, road race and all of this is an uh, asset to Angola. Most definitely. So why isn't it that the Carnival portion of our festivities yes. um, better promoted. Why isn't there a budget? Why isn't the it, budget there sooner? There is a budget, but um, over the past couple of years, uh, I like you would notice, there's been not only economic downturn in the world, and so the market and the promotion budget for Carnival has been substantially reduced. Um, I believe that it should be increased. I believe that the tourism budget for market in Angola should be increased, especially in these tough times. We should increase the spending, but if there's no money, there's nothing to spend. So it has um, been substantially reduced, and uh, we are seeing the effects of that. But even with a reduced budget, I must commend the Carnival Committee last year for still pulling off a tremendous carnival last year. And um, even though there's less money in the coffers to spend, I believe through creativity and avenues such as yours, um, Angola Access, we can promote and, and make carnival a wonderful one and take it to the world. And since, but to be honest, um, I am not really feeling the buzz as yet. I'm really not feeling the buzz. I'm anxious to hear the bands release because the bands in itself really create the carnival atmosphere. And I must um, commend 
uh, stations such as Class FM, who has been really promoting and pushing Carnival in Angola and having the Carnival talks and so forth. But we all need to do more. But I believe starting on Monday, um, Monday, July the 5th, with the release of, of Exodus Band, you will really have a buzz start in creating an Angola relative to Carnival for this year. Okay. Now, a uh, second ago, you mentioned that budgets are low and you need more creative ways. Now, it doesn't cost to put a flyer online, and that's the quickest way for it to get spread out there. There's Facebook, there's Twitter, there's Angola Access. Uh, there's avenues that we need to take advantage of. Sometimes we have to put our, our bias in our personal feelings relative to whatever it is or whoever it is aside and use these avenues for promotion. Okay. Now, my biggest question here is the bands. Mm -hmm. Why the bands basically just put in all this hard work, all this effort, all this energy, and they don't put anything in their pockets? It's like Angola uses their creativity, but do not return. Just like a band, let's let's say Panda Vibes. They put a lot of money into their in, into the efforts, but at the end of the day, right, they don't really get anything back from it. How can how can Anguilla, right, change it? How can we change that? How can the bands be compensated for what they do for the island? Well, the bands, what the bands need to do, right? I believe what, what, what the bands do every year is that they spend a lot of time and resources putting pen to paper, putting lyrics together, putting creative music together. I mean, that rivals anywhere in the world, but we need to take our, our music outside of Anguilla. Our music needs to travel the world. And um, even through the marketing efforts of the Angola Tourist Board and I, um, we have been speaking to the industry partners, speaking to the industry, speaking to the market outside of Angola relative to Angola music. So right now, from a tourism perspective, we are using um, Angola's music to promote, as a vehicle to promote Angola on a whole. Now it's up to the bands now to follow that chart and get outside of Angola so that they can see financial returns for themselves. Because around the world, I was in New York just last month, and I was surprised on three occasions I heard Pantavai's music. On three occasions. And, and recently in Barbados, um, there was a buzz ab about um, the song My Anguilla. So really and truly the music is out there, the bands just need to follow. There are people out there who know about the Angolan music, who know that we have created music in Angola, who knows about the Exodus band, who knows about Better Band, who knows about the Boom Pets, who knows about the Panda Vibes International, who know this music, but the bands need to follow and have promotion, and have someone promoting them outside of Angola, other than the Angola Tourist Board and I, um, in, in relative to them, so they can see the financial rewards and all that comes along with promoting and intellectual property rights and so forth. And last year, I was really impressed with a lot of the music and even in previous years you know I was always impressed not not only with Panda Vice but the other bands as well and I don't really get involved in the band discussion because I know that all of them put the real effort and all of them have to put money behind the efforts. I, I would say this about Infusion Band and Motion Band and some of the other smaller bands that, that, we, that we call smaller bands is that you know we all were small at one point. Panda Vice was the number one band um, forever. Better band wasn't the number one band there. And, 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 and bands go in cycles. I remember North Song Brass used to be the band, not only for Angola, but the band for this region, you know? And then came along the Mustington Brothers. Then came along Better Band. And then came along Panther Vibes. So the truth of the matter is, is that bands go in waves and cycles, and there will be a band. Um, believe it or not, and I know this might, be, um, might not be the way Panda Vibes might, might like to take it, but there will be a band in Angola that will overcome Panda Vibes at some point, whether it's this year or whether it's five years from now, but it will happen. It's inevitable. It happens. It's a cycle. So you have to encourage these younger bands to continue pressing on because they too will be one of the premier bands, not only in, in Angola at some point, but perhaps in the Caribbean. So I was told that back in the days, you were Landville Hughes, aka Panther's biggest competition. <laughs> well, that's a long way back. Um, I would say that Panther was my biggest competition back then. Um, I know uh, Joe Speak, Kylie Gov, of Angola Access, who remember back in the day when we were in school, we had these competitions down at the um, workshop, I believe, every lunchtime. And it was um, Panther um, and I. We will be going at it back and forth. Um, that is um, in my youth. And um, a lot of people don't know, but Panther got that name because he was quick. 
He was a fast, fast runner, very good athlete. So um, we would go back at it, and at that time, Panther wasn't really into the soca per se, but we were into the reggae dub, the dance hall. And um, it wasn't only Panther and I, but it was also Slippery, who is an accredited writer, um, had a soca writer, Slippery and Zay Richardson. And it was um, who we called Papa Santa at that time, he's now called DJ Sheriff. And um, we, would, we were writers and we were chanters and we would go back and forth at it with Panther. Uh, and I believe he honed his skills back then. Um, and, and this is where he is today. So we, we didn't stick around with it, but he did. And um, you know, everybody in this art is here for a reason and that is called. Let us hear a little something from you right now, though. Just a little freestyle. I, I, I'm far removed. Ah, come on. From that. Just a little something. Far, just a little far something. From that. And I, come I would on. love that people will um, view this video. Do this video. Um, just, do this video. Just two, just two, two little things. Just two little things. Just so, you know? I, 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 if I, if I must remember, um, there was a song that I wrote. Black is a black and white is a white hypocrite, a hypocrite, a parasite, a parasite. Mandela, he's black and the clock, he's white. It's about time for, come, for them to see a new light, cause right up in the. I don't remember.